We're thrilled we could physically gather here this morning to honor Chris and Elaine and their incredible generosity to our community. On behalf of the Fairfield Prep community and the Fairfield University leadership teams, I offer my warmest thanks and welcome to Chris, to Elaine, to Scott, uh, in absentia, to Colin, uh, to classmates Tom Shea, Greg Marshall, to Ryan Carroll, our distinguished president of the class of 21, representing our prep student body, to Dr. DQ, Father Tunney on behalf of the Jesuits, and a giant thank you to our advancement office, our marketing team, our tech team for making this great day possible. And of course, none of this would have been possible without the tenacity and Jesuit passion of my predecessor and spiritual brother, Father Tom Simisky, and his team, led by Tommy DQ, Tim D, our teachers, our students, and consultants. But today, we are most grateful to you, Chris and Elaine. Chris, today you exemplify in every way, through your life and your example, what we call in the Jesuit world, a man for others. I think it's no small coincidence, or as Dr. DQ would say, a God incidence, that in 1973, your senior year, Father Arupe gave that famous speech to Jesuit alumni in which he coined the modern mantra, men and women for others. Men and women who cannot conceive of a love of God, which does not include a love for the least of their neighbors. Thank you, Chris and Elaine, for being living examples of our mission. The McLeod Innovation Center at Fairfield Prep will be a hub of innovation, collaboration, and transformation in the Jesuit tradition. This is the culmination of a 30-year vision to embody this space in Xavier Hall, named for Francis Xavier, the first great social entrepreneur of the Society of Jesus, of the church, and of our mission. We envision a center of activity and energy where our boys and our faculty and alums of the decades can come together and transform lives, but never merely for their own merits, always for the society around us. A just and compassionate and equitable world that mirrors that kingdom of God that our boys study at prep every day. Chris and Elaine, while you have made the physical bricks and mortar possible of Fairfield Prep, we know that you also charge us with building up what St. Paul calls the living stones of Fairfield Prep. We pledge to be good and loyal stewards of this gift. We cannot wait to imagine more deeply the ways in which innovation and transformation can happen across disciplines. But as always, we do these things AMDG, for the greater glory of God and not for ourselves. Good morning. My name is Ryan Carroll, and I'm the student body president here at Prep. On behalf of the student body, present and future, I would like to extend our thanks to Mr. and Mrs. McLeod for their generous donation that has made this wonderful center of learning possible. First and foremost, this creative space is going to allow prep students to learn in a whole new way as it embodies the ideal of cura personalis, contributing to the education of the mind, body, and spirit. The McLeod Center will break down the walls between academic disciplines and build connections between those disciplines, reimagining learning at prep all while building the community. In the short time it has been open, I've had club meetings, classes, and even lunch with my friends down here. And while this space is going to allow for advancements with robotics and our technology department, it's going to impact every student, no matter what their interests may be. Furthermore, the McLeod Innovation Center will let students use their imagination and dream. They can now show that imagination and their creativity as they turn those creative ideas into a reality. The possibilities are endless. I've already heard from many of my peers about their ideas and how they're gonna make their impact using this center. From a podcast to a revamped film and media club or simply a spots for students to get to know one another. You know, when I was writing this, I realized I'm only gonna be able to use this space for the next two months. However, I'm so excited for the future generation of Fairfield Prep and the students with the possibilities of the McLeod Center at their fingertips. I cannot express how proud I am to be a student and future alumnus of Fairfield Prep as Prep continues to take that trajectory towards greatness. And the McLeod Innovation Center represents a massive step in that direction. So on behalf of Prep students, thank you again to Mr. and Mrs. McLeod for the tremendous gift. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure to be here and it, it really does give me great joy to be able to support Fairfield Prep and the Innovation Center. You know, PREP's had a, a huge impact on my life, on my personal development, on my career. 
It's here that I was really instilled with a commitment to excellence. I was challenged in the classroom by my teachers, by my peers, challenged on the field by my coaches. I learned the importance of hard work, of always doing your best, of being prepared. I also learned that person, cure personalis that Ryan referred to, the importance of concern for others, and, and not just those less fortunate. At PrEP, I learned that my perspective wasn't the only one, that there were other people who had opinions, very, very valid ones, and I, that translated into certain empathy, an ability to have develop some listening skills that have really served me well in my career, whether it's leading a company or, or trying to negotiate a business transaction. And most importantly, as always, are the Jesuit values by which we try to live. It's provided me direction, especially during difficult times. Now, when it comes to values, you know, PrEP built on the solid foundation that was established by my parents. And that's why we honor them with the naming of this as the McLeod Family Innovation Center. And it's dedicated not just to my parents, but to my whole family. And that includes my wife, Elaine, and my siblings, it would, I wouldn't be able to do what, what I did without their support and also without the, the lessons I learned at their hands. And Scott, I'm really thankful for you being here today and for the help you've given me in my uh, philanthropic efforts through our private foundation. Now, five brothers and, and three de generations of McLeods have attended prep. We've benefited greatly from the Jesuit education and, and we're fortunate to be able to pass that gift along. When Father Smisky and Rick Henderson shared their plans with me. It really resonated because I feel that it's been science, technology, and innovation that have really improved the quality of life for us on Earth. Now, it's also created some problems like climate change. And there's still other issues that we haven't been able to address like disease. We need more college graduates with a background in STEM to identify innovative solutions. So the McLeod Innovation Center really aligned, aligned with my philanthropic interests, and I'm proud to be here for its dedication. Now, as part of the dedication, I've been asked to deliver a short talk to the prep students and alumni, and I feel, obviously, it's appropriate to talk about innovation. And I'll cover two topics, its importance to my career, and also reflect on innovation in a time of pandemic. And they do intertwine. So, Let's start first with a definition of innovation. I'm sure everyone has their own, but to me, it's finding a better way. It might be inventing a better product, it might be developing a, a better process, a better method. And you know, there, there, there's a different element, those different elements will come into play, I think, in a, in a, in a couple of the, uh, the COVID experiences that I wanna share with you. First, on the personal level, though, Innovation's been integral to my career success. I always wanted to, I was curious, wanted to understand how things worked. So I built on a solid science foundation here, but also at Yale where I majored in engineering and economics. But after working in a lab at Yale one summer, I realized that I wasn't the smartest scientist around. Uh, you know, I wasn't gonna win a Nobel Prize. And I could have much more leverage by leading organizations that were trying to innovate. So I went on to MIT Sloan where I got my master's in management. And I made it a point to try to work in sectors and in companies where rapid technological change was occurring. Because it's when that established order is disrupted that there's a greater opportunity to create value. What kismet it is that I am here to welcome my former classmate, my former teammate, my neighbor, my friend, Chris McLeod, and his wife Elaine and Scott back to Fairfield Prep where we first met nearly 52 years ago. Now, I discovered quickly that Chris was a very helpful person and immediately took advantage of that and would ask him for help with calculus, okay? And what were unfathomable problems to me were simple math for Chris, and he always graciously extended the help. We were teammates. We played football and track together. In 1973, we both we played against each other in the Harvard-Yale freshman football game. Not a big event. <laughs> Yale Bowl never looks more cavernous than when it has only 30 fans inside. <laughs> Which is good because the good guys lost that day, Yale won. <laughs> uh, after Yale, Chris went to MIT and got his MBA and then embarked on a stellar career. 
Now, I, I am so proud to be a member of the class of 1973, well, led by luminaries like Chris, Kevin Callagher, an internationally regarded uh, cartoonist. We have one of the world's most uh, foremost technicians in restoring medieval art, George Bazaka. And as a member of the class, I enjoy just reflecting in the glory of their accomplishments. When we get together at parties and barbecues, all the guys, I mean, it, all the guys say, Chris, he's, he's such a regular guy. We know he works on an intellectual plane that we can only imagine. And yet, he never condescends, he never judges. He's just one of the guys. And he is so respected and admired by our friend group because of that. Um, after graduate school, Chris, um, uh, joined with his, one of his best friends from college and they joined a small company and over the next 10 or 15 years they built that into one of the world's first um, online marketing companies. They turned that into a global success. And then Chris pivoted out of that into a whole new industry. He went into life sciences. Something that requires a, a deep understanding of complex scientific issues and, and only Chris could make that kind of transition in the middle of his life. I know he worked tremendously hard at it but he was immediately successful joined a company, Curagen. They had a, uh, a product that was one of the world's first genomic testing systems, and they spun that off into an independent company, and again, it was a big success. And today, he works for Elm Street Ventures, a venture capital group that works with bright young entrepreneurs and helps them take their ideas and make products and companies that will save lives and uh, improve the, uh, the lives of uh, people around the world, millions of people. I mean, that, that's the very definition of a Jesuit man for others right there. Now, of course, behind every great man, there is a great woman. And I'm sure Chris would tell you that the greatest joy and blessing in his life is his wife and partner, Elaine. They met in eighth grade. Right? Now, think of that. Think, in this day and age, think of that. Can you think of many examples of love and constancy like that? You know, we're neighbors, and particularly after hurricanes, we're all out in our backyards putting them back together again. And I get to watch Chris and Elaine working together in patience, in partnership. Whereas in the Shea backyard, there's bickering and arguing. But, uh, I mean, they, they are the very model of what a loving married couple should be. And if you have any doubt, meet their children, Aaron and Colin, and you'll know. You'll know. Um, so, um, oh, drawing a blank here. Now, oh, yes, uh, of course. <laughs> Of course, Elaine uh, had a long and successful career in nursing, right? And so now today, they take their deep knowledge of science, their care for their community, and their compassion for the world at large, and they discern how to take their bounty, right, and leverage it and get a multiplier effect so they can take what they have and go on out and uh, help other enterprises do great things in the world. Now. Tom, I'm glad you're running a course on entrepreneurship at PrEP here, and as you mentioned, developing business plans and pitch decks. Now, there's different types of entrepreneurship, and the one I'd like to really call out is, is what Christensen calls disruptive uh, innovation or disruptive entrepreneurship. And uh, they, he and his, some collaborators did a study to try to understand the, the different characteristics of disruptive innovators, such as uh, Steve Jobs, for example and to see whether they shared certain skills. And, and they've written a book here called The Innovator's DNA, and uh, I'm going to leave it with you, Tom, because uh, it really points out that there's indeed five skills that they feel are critical for innovative entrepreneurs. One is what they call, and the key one is associational thinking. Uh, it's the ability to link together ideas that are not ordinarily associated. And underlying those that, that one skill are probably four supportive skills, questioning, observing, networking, and experimenting. You know, Ryan, you mentioned a lot of the activities that you help would be done here in the Innovation Center. And, and I think you know, those give you an opportunity to develop these skills, which you know, typically you wouldn't develop in a classroom. But I think in a, in a place like the center where you're working on extracurricular activities, you can do that. These are the types of skills that I think are best learned through active learning. You know, in my case, it was a paper route, uh, painting houses. Tom, I think in your case, it was running a, a refreshment stand. So my real aspirations for the, you know, the McLeod Innovation Center is that it become a place for this type of active learning. 
of learning outside of the classroom. But most importantly, too, I also want it to be a place where Jesuit values are reinforced, reinforced in a different setting. And I guess if you'll permit me one last reflection on this time of COVID, uh, this one more related to the Jesuit values. I think the face of our response to the COVID pandemic has been uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci is certainly raised on Jesuit values. He went to Regis High School in, in New York, then on to Holy Cross. In a recent interview with, uh, in the Holy Cross Alumni Magazine, he cited that his, you know, he felt that his success is based on speaking truth to power, not being afraid to tell people what they might not want to hear, and ensuring that his recommendations were based on science. My characteristics, you know, in my experience rather, these are characteristics that are shared by many, many of our prep graduates and alumni. But I think what also really struck me about Dr. Fauci is he goes on to talk about the disparate impact that the virus has had on minorities and the poor. And he is really committed to trying to personally turn that around. You may realize, or you, you may not know that in fact, in his role as head of the NIAID, he played a key role in this program called PEPFAR, which was the US response to try to fight HIV AIDS in the developing world. And for that effort, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So certainly, when we talk about men for others, Dr. Fauci stands out. So finally, my aspiration for the McLeod Innovation Center to, is that it be a place where prep students can explore, can explore interests outside of the traditional classroom, can engage in active learning. It'd be a place where Jesuit values can be reinforced. My hope is that 40 or 50 years from now, Fairfield Prep is still here, still true to this Jesuit mission, and that you too have the privilege and the joy of passing that gift along. AMDG.